Now, if the global economy really is coming back, Moshe Gavrielov would know because he's the CEO of Xilinx. They make integrated circuits and software design tools for manufacturers throughout the world. In fact, most of their customers are outside the United States. Moshe, welcome to the program. Good to have you with us. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Talk a little bit first about Xilinx, just so people understand what the company does, because I know that they're, you're a chip maker, but it's programmable chips, which is a specific segment of the market, and it gives you insight into a lot of other markets. Yes, uh, indeed. Uh, Xilinx is the bellwether company. We have 50%, over 50% of the market of programmable logics. Programmable logic chips are chips that are used and customized by all of our customers to achieve a unique solution so that they have a competitive advantage. We have over 20,000 customers. All of the major systems companies use our devices uh, to enable their products. What would be an example of a customer and a use of the chip? Because the idea is they can program them to do different things throughout the life cycle. They don't have to actually get rid of an entire machine or an entire piece of equipment. They can program the chip to do different things, right? Yes. Well, a good example would be Cisco Systems. Uh, Cisco happens to be one of our larger customers. They use our devices as the core of their networking products and also throughout their product offering, which is very broad. They use the entire family of products, both the high-end products, which are targeted at infrastructure uh, solutions, and the lower-end products, which are more consumer-oriented. All right. Now, having said that, do you have a window onto global chip demand? I mean, you talked about it being a bellwether. What are you seeing for chip demand right now? Well, as we have 20,000 customers in really all potential electronics market, we do get to see how the business is doing. And what we have seen is that the business is starting to come back, that uh, generally speaking, the worst is behind uh, the electronics industry and things are starting to improve. There's starting to be more of a balance between supply and demand uh, with regards to um, the final shipments. All right, so who's winning out right now? I mean, did, was there a big flush out of inventory in, uh, last year and is now that being rebuilt? Uh, definitely there was a huge flush out at the end of last year and the beginning of uh, this year and then there was escalating demand uh, around the middle of the year, which was quite difficult to address. But those things are starting to come more into balance, and the end demand is more in line with the supply chain today. All right. Now, with that end demand in mind, what about margins? I mean, are you able to actually get the kind of margins and keep them, or is that something that is on a case-by-case -case basis and deeply negotiated? Well, it's always deeply negotiated, but the nature of our business is such that we have an ecosystem system that enables us to um, retain higher margins than typical in the semiconductor space. So, What does that mean when you say you've got an ecosystem? Does that well, mean you've got a whole system of, of chips that you, that you sell out? It's more than chips. It's the chips. It's the software to design the chips. It's the IP, the intellectual property that the customers use um, to develop and, and use in their products. It's also the people in the field who help the customers do the design. So it's a very front-to-end design flow which uses our entire set of capabilities. All right. And just to be clear, what, what's going on with margins right now? Are you able to maintain them? Uh, generally speaking, our margins uh, have been above uh, 60 percent, and we're seeing um, them stay more or less at that level. Our target is to get over time to 65 percent. Now, what about opportunities uh, in some emerging markets? I know that there's a big 3G rollout that is coming in China. How are you going to take advantage of that? Uh, definitely the wireless opportunity, the 3G rollout in China, and generally the wireless infrastructure buildup in the third world is one of the major drivers for our business and actually has softened the downturn. As Xilinx saw it, that was one of our strongest markets, which just actually went from strength to strength during the downturn and helped us through. We expect that to continue through this year and through next year as there's rollout of infrastructure throughout the third world. Now, who do you partner with there? I mean, who are the big customers that we should pay attention well, to? Well, typically all of the major communications infrastructure providers are our customers um, and companies like Ericsson, Huawei, uh, 
Alcatel Lucent are a major customer of ours and they're major providers to this market. Talk a little bit about the supply chain that you have to manage because, I mean, if you take a look at the last conference call, yes. you got a lot of questions having to do with the supply of something called the Vertex 5. Yes. And this was a new chip, really. What happened there and has the issues been, uh, been, been ironed out? Vertex 5 um, was our latest product that we actually announced three years ago and have been rolling out. And it has gone from strength to strength. And uh, when the inventory uh, was brought down and then when it came out, there was a huge demand for Vertex 5 chips. And our suppliers, the major foundries, were not capable of meeting the demand. That issue is largely behind us. We expect it totally to be totally behind us uh, in the December quarter, but we've worked through that and we're addressing all of those issues and delivering to the customers as we speak. All right. Now, one of the things you've been doing in New York, uh, you've been attending the Citigroup uh, Global Technology Conference. What's the tone of technology CEOs right now? Uh, generally, the feeling is that the worst is behind us. There's what I would call guarded optimism. There's the expectation that from this point, up, things should generally start improving with some potential for a little downside, but just generally the expectation is that um, business will improve. For Xilinx in particular, the first two months of this quarter were very healthy and vibrant in terms of orders. All right. Well, I want to thank you very much, Moshe of Gavrielov, coming in and giving us some insight into the world of Xilinx and explaining the world of programmable logic devices and chips. Thank you very much. Appreciate your insights. Thank you.